Two-day Security Council meeting ends. Commander-in-Chief pushing for an end to killings from his lieutenants. At the end of the exercise, we will address uh, the media. A date for new polling units will be announced soon as INEC chairman visits proposed areas. This long-awaited collaboration can now commence in earnest. Plus, Nigerian Port Authority and Film Corporation to get accurate data as Bureau of Statistics takes up assignment. Hello and welcome to NTN Network News, reaching you live from our studio here in Abuja. I'm Joseph Johnson. Reading with me tonight are Adiola Komiakere in Lagos and Suleiman Abdullahi Rikachikung in Kaduna. Thanks for joining us. Taking off with security matters, because the resumed meeting of the National Security Council has ended at the presidential villa. The crucial meeting was summoned by President Muhammadu Buhari to find lasting solutions to the persistent challenges of security in parts of the country. State House correspondent Adam Mosambo has details. The National Security Council meeting, which started Friday last week, critically analyzed the worrisome security situation in parts of the country, challenges associated with containment efforts, and what needs to be done urgently towards the restoration of normalcy. Convener of the crucial meeting, President Muhammadu Buhari, is worried over the renewed attacks on soft targets by insurgents, bandits, and other criminal elements to undermine national security and stability. Consequently, participants including Vice President Yemi Oshibaju, Ministers of Defense, Justice, Interior, Police and Foreign Affairs, the National Security Advisor, Service Chiefs and Heads of other security as well as intelligence agencies took turns to either ask questions or make observations and suggestions on the best way forward. President Muhammad Buhari had told the council that he is prepared to take profound measures in the wider interests of Nigeria and Nigerians. His optimism remains unshaken that the forces of evil marauding about in different parts of the country will be defeated. As the president insists, containing kidnapping for ransom, banditry, and other acts of lawlessness bedeviling the country is a task that must be done. Efforts made by NTA News to hear from the participants on the resolutions adopted at the strategic meeting were unsuccessful. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. From the State House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. And from the National Assembly, the Senate is to receive briefings from service chiefs, Director General of the National Intelligence Agency, and other security heads on the state of Nigeria's security. National Assembly correspondent Ignatius Sunkwo reports. Plenary commenced with President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, briefing the legislators on the invitation of service chiefs and other heads of security agencies for a meeting at plenary. The briefing will take from the service chiefs and other security agencies the 6th of this month. It will be very crucial for us to be properly informed. And from the items scheduled for the day's consideration, Senate called for special presidential intervention for persons living with disabilities, especially the provision of assistive devices, funds and access to structures. This followed a motion moved by Senator Yusuf Yusuf. Urge all ministries, departments and agencies to provide at least 10% of their projects and programs for persons with disabilities through the National Commission for Persons with Disabilities. Our men in the forefront, in the battlefield, of course, every day they are being affected. Every day many of them are being disabled. They are falling into the category of people that we are talking about. Skills acquisition in agro-ally services, business development, metal fabrication, ETC, and CBN through NISAL to provide starter packs. The Chartered Institute of Directors of Nigeria Establishment Bill, which seeks to give global recognition to directors in Nigeria, sponsored by Senate leader Yahya Abdullahi, and the one that seeks to convert the Industrial Arbitration Panel into a commission, sponsored by Senator Sadiq Omar, 
past second reading. The institute needs to secure membership of the Global Network of Directors Institute, the umbrella body of institute of directors in the world with headquarters in Canada and European Federation of Directors. We provide an opportunity for Nigeria to join the rest of the world in inculcating international best practices in labor dispute resolutions. The Federal College of Education, Goza, Borno State Establishment Bill, sponsored by Senator Aline Dume, also passed second reading from the National Assembly, Ignatius Nkwo, NTN News. In the meantime, the presidency has given more insight into the seriousness of an alert by the Department of State Services, DSS, on sinister moves by misguided elements to wreak havoc on the government, sovereignty and corporate existence of the country. A statement by the special advisor to the president, media and publicity, Femi Additional, indicates that evidence of these around abound that these disruptive elements are now recruiting the leadership of some ethnic groups and politicians around the country to convene some sort of conference where a vote of no confidence would be passed on the president, thus throwing the land into turmoil. The agents hope to achieve what they failed to do through the ballot box in the 2019 elections. The statement adds that Nigerians have opted for democratic rule and the only accepted way to change a democratically elected government is through elections and the presidency already vested with mandate and authority by Nigerians till 2023 pledges to keep the country together even if some unruly feathers would be ruffled in the process. President Muhammad Buhari strongly condemns the killing of 11 people in Gwe waste uh, local government of Benue state and the reprisals on innocent people by mobs that blocked roads to unleash terror and violence. President Buhari also deplores the killing of innocent people in Anambra state by mobs, saying that, quote, in both cases, innocent people were killed through no fault of theirs. Quote, uh, hate and bigotry have eaten so deeply and violates the sanctity of life. If we allow this culture of violence to go unchecked, such mobs would destroy law and order, the president says. The president urges leaders of ethnic and religious groups to play their own roles constructively in controlling their followers and uh, members in order to support the government's efforts for sustainable peace. While commiserating with the bereaved families and the governments and people of Benue and Anambra states, President Buhari condemns the police and commends, I should say, the police and other law enforcement agencies for their prompt response in averting the escalation of violence, urging them to put in every effort to apprehend perpetrators of the heinous attacks. In the meantime, Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed has called on the opposition People's Democratic Party to desist from playing politics with serious national challenges if it cannot assist with solutions to the problem. The minister stated this at a media briefing on national security in Abuja. Anthony Forsen reports. Information and culture minister frowned at the opposition People's Democratic Party over statements credited to the party at a news conference where Lai Mohammed said the party made uncomplimentary statements. And they went ahead to say at the historical press conference that they have not come to play politics. Who is willing to? 
The minister maintained that the People's Democratic Party at this press conference claimed to suggest recommendations on how to tackle the security challenges facing the country. Unknown to them, the suggestions are all contained in the 10-point resolution that emanated from the town hall meeting on security held in Kaduna on the 8th of April. The recommendations of the town hall meeting range from embracing the rule of law, urgent need for political restructuring, decentralization of the judiciary, as well as provision of free, qualitative and compulsory primary education for all school-aged children. Other recommendations are the expansion of the military, police and other security agencies, as well as equipping them with modern technology, while religious and traditional rulers must be encouraged to promote intermarriage. Gentlemen, this are clearly more than on passing and far rich than the political unity which the PDP embarked upon yesterday. Conveniently, the PDP did not acknowledge this national engagement that future panelists from academia and society. Lai Mohammed added that the People's Democratic Party did not respect its own words as it played cheap politics while playing ostrich at the same time that the federal government is not prosecuting terrorists. The minister said records are there to show the number of prosecution and convictions. Responding to the ultimatum given by bandits in whose custody the Greenfield students in Kaduna are, he said the federal government is in touch with the state government over the issue. In Abuja, Anthony Forson, NTA News. To talk in security matters, the Nigeria police have continued to reject their force to combat the internal security challenges. The latest is posting of Commissioner of Police Abutu Yaru from Zamfara to Imo State. A statement by force indicates that five other commissioners of police were also posted to new commands. They are Nasiru Mohammed, who has been redeployed to Western Port Authority, Lagos, from Imo. Husseini Rabiu takes over Zamfara State Police Command, John Amadi Airport Police Command, Ikeja Anderson Bankole now heads Police Special Fraud Unit, while Joe Wachuku Ewonwu takes over Department of Finance and Administration Force Headquarters. The House of Representatives has urged authorities to bring to justice the suspect involved in the sexual assault and murder of a female job seeker in Akwaibom State, Ms. Inubong Umoren. The House condemned the incident and called for thorough inv investigation by the police. National Assembly correspondent Lamiali reports on this and other features at House Plenary Tuesday. The issue was raised as a matter of urgent public importance by Representative Unyimedem, who recalled the unfortunate circumstances of the murder of the job applicants and appealed for urgent action. On account of rape and other violent crimes against women and the girl child should not go unpunished. Other issues of security breaches in Kogi, Kaduna and other parts of the country raised as plenary were referred to the House Special Committee on Security. The special committee that was set up on security. I think we talked about this last week, that we aggregate all these motions together. Uh, we will mention the name of the constituency and we'll refer it. The House following a motion from Representative Muraina Ajibola on the recent fire disaster at a market in Ibadan appeal for assistance to victims. The House adopted a resolution from Representative Alex Ebuna urging the Nigeria National Petroleum Corporation to review licenses of modular refineries issued to indigenous firms due to poor performance. By the inability of the modular refinery to commence operation, I could only force the federal government to import petroleum products and sell to consumers at subsidiaries. The lawmakers passed for second reading a bill to establish national social investment program sponsored by House Speaker Femi Bajabiamila and 11 others. A bill to establish Federal Medical Center, Red Rock Bay, Delta State, sponsored by Representative Anthony Afe. A bill to establish Federal Capital Advertisement Agency, sponsored by House Chief Whip Mohammed Tahir Mungunu. And a bill to amend the Court of Appeal Act from Representative Onufio Luke from the National Assembly, Lami Ali, NC News. 
and the House of Representatives has promised to liaise with relevant stakeholders for the release of the abducted students of Federal College of Forestry Mechanization, Afaka, Kaduna State. Chairman, House Committee on Defense, Baba Jimmy Benson, made the promise while addressing parents of the abducted students who were at the National Assembly to voice their pains. Mobolaji Moribiri has the report. Parents of the abducted students and the college students union were carrying banners and placards calling for the release of their children and mates while pleading with the lawmakers to intervene. So we are praying that the government will come to our assistance. Since all this were not, we never even knew that this thing would even reach three days. But now it's 55 days. If no back is me, if you no front is me, I'm not having anybody on let's go. Addressing the two groups, Chairman House Committee on Defense, on behalf of the House, assured them that the legislators are aware of their plight and are working with key actors to rescue the students. Uh, all hands will be on deck to ensure that this matter is put to rest. We also immediately called the DG of Frain, so he's going to see us in the next couple of days. He later briefs the House on the development. We will refer that case to the Special Committee on Security. It will be recalled that the students were abducted on the 11th of March 2021. Since then, the federal and state governments have been making efforts to ensure the freedom of the remaining students. Mobolaji, Mori Biri, NTA News. This is NTN Network News. Still to come, federal government approves 30th of June as new deadline for NIN SIM registration. Details after these messages do stay. Thanks for staying with us. New measures to protect Nigerians from the deadly variant of COVID-19 has been announced by the Presidential Steering Committee on COVID-19. The measures deal with passengers and airlines from India, Brazil and Turkey. Statement from the Chairman of the Presidential Steering Committee and Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, says after a risk assessment, an interim travel advisory has been issued on passengers and airlines from India, Turkey and Brazil as precautionary measures to minimize the risk of a surge in COVID-19 cases in Nigeria. Reduction of the validity period of pre-boarding COVID-19 PCR test for all Nigeria-bound passengers from 96 hours to 72 hours. Henceforth, PCR test results older than 72 hours before departure shall not be accepted from these countries. Any person who has visited Brazil, India, or Turkey within 14 days preceding travel to Nigeria shall be denied entry into Nigeria. This, however, does not apply to passengers who transited through these countries. Airlines and passengers who fail to comply with the regulations shall mandatorily pay a penalty of $3,500 for each defaulting passenger. Nigerians and those with permanent resident permit shall undergo seven days of mandatory quarantine in a government-approved facility at the point of entry city and at cost to the passenger. The Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, has urged the public to beware of fraudsters who use his name and office to defraud unsuspecting Nigerians through false information on social media, urging members of the public to submit their curriculum vitae at a fee to a non-existing desk at the office of the Secretary to the Government of the Federation to facilitate their selection for various federal government appointments. In a statement, the SGF has also observed with dismay that such fraudsters have also resorted to sending fake advertisements for supply of some medical diagnostic equipment to his office. The public is by this notice advised to disregard such information as the office of the SGF has no such mandate and has never requested for such information or put up such advertisement. 
the SJF warns originators of such fraudulent requests to desist forthwith from using his office to fleece unsuspecting members of the public or be prepared to face the wrath of the law. INEC Chairman Professor Mahmoud Yakubu says the Commission has not made any formal statement on the number of new polling units to be created as the Commission is still in the process. This was during an inspection of some proposed areas marked for the exercise in the Federal Capital Territory and Nasarawa State. Mir Ogidi reports. From theory to practicals, the INEC chair leaves the boardroom to the field. Shuttling from Guarimpa to Apo in the Federal Capital Territory, then Karo in Nasarawa State, checking to ensure the new polling units proposed meet the standards and not political. So I'm here to verify that the right thing is being done, converting those voting points to polling units and relocating them as per the Commission's guidelines. Our hope is that we will not see this kind of congestion again in future elections. Then on the number of expected new polling units. Uh, the end of the exercise will address uh, the media. Media chat expected before June 28, a moment that will mark an increase in the number of polling units from the current 119,973 since 1996 and will also perfect plans to commence the continuous voters registration exercise on sound footing. Mayor Ogidi, NT News. Now, the federal government has approved the extension of the deadline for NIN-SIM data verification to 30th June 2021 as enrollment reaches 54 million. According to a joint statement by Director of Public Affairs, Nigerian Communications Commission, Dr. Ikechuku Adinde, and Head Corporate Communications, National Identity Management Commission, Kayode Adeguke, the extension follows requests by key industry players to accommodate all citizens and legal residents in the registration process. So far, about 54 million people have obtained their NIN which translates to up to 190 million mobile numbers. As empirical evidence suggests that each unique NIN maps up to three to four phone lines. The much-awaited Android enrollment system is also now ready for deployment, and this has the potential to significantly accelerate the speed and ease of enrollments. Meanwhile, the telecom providers and other enrollment agents have also opened several centers across the country to make it easier and eligible citizens and residents to obtain and link their names. National Bureau of Statistics is to produce data for Nigerian Ports Authority and Nigeria Film Corporation as the need for accurate data for national planning and enhanced economic growth continue to be indispensable. To this end, memoranda of understanding have been signed to facilitate that. Moplang Dakok reports. <laughs> The signing of the dotted lines now officially gives the National Bureau of Statistics the license to produce accurate data for the Nigerian Ports Authority and the Nigerian Film Corporation, two organizations that contribute much percentage to the gross domestic product of the country but have no actual figure of their contribution. Finally, this long-awaited collaboration between our agencies aimed at producing statistical information and data analytics on port-related activities can now commence in earnest. It is expected that in a few months' time, accurate data from the sectors will be available to enable government formulate policies that will enhance economic growth. In addition, I would like to specifically request the collaboration of um, automation of data collection. This is an error that would really um, require support, which would eliminate errors and also um, have live and up-to-date information as such when required. So we want to migrate away from where we are just making estimate to where we can have verifiable data 
from National Bureau of Statistics, which will also encourage uh, foreign investors. The partnerships are also expected to come handy for the GDP rebasing exercise scheduled to commence next year. In Abuja, Muplang Dakok, NTA News. The Windhoek Declaration is worth the while in Nigeria. However, Nigerian journalists appear to be the worst hit during the COVID-19, and access to information and freedom to disseminate SEM must be enhanced in any democratic government towards achieving good governance. These were some of the issues raised by representatives of UNESCO, U.S. Embassy, and United Nations Information Center at a joint commemoration of the 2021 World Press Freedom Day. Haman Jabani reports. 30 years ago, Widhog in Namibia became the birthplace of freedom of information globally. Despite the challenges the media has been facing over the years, experts say the role of the media in nations building cannot be overestimated, just as information is a public good that must be freely accessed and disseminated. The relationship between the freedom of the press and the need for a democratic society place the media as the backbone of developments worldwide. Our enjoyment of this good will be curtailed if journalists are mistreated and if they are not given the freedoms to operate. So if we all take it as a public good, we will all support the media. We will all support uh, journalism to thrive in the country. The undying need to provide a deep environment for them as important stakeholders in the nation's political landscape. Anything outside this means the nation's democracy because the oxygen of a functional uh, democracy. Acting Director News, Nigerian Television Authority, who represented Director General Yakubu Ibu Mohammed, said Nigeria is not doing bad in the area of press freedom, just as NTA strives to fulfill its mandate. Our mandate entails that we project positive things, we project development. Developmental journalism is also part of journalism. The president spoke about those that are in charge the coordinators of information to make information available to the citizens. So I think, yes, we have come a long way. And I think Nigeria is, may not be running fast, but I think we are getting there soon. Jane Clark of the Embassy of the United States applauded Nigeria for doing well in the area of press freedom. Here in Nigeria, we have a lot to be proud of, and the, the work that's going on in investigations, which have won international awards, really need to be applauded. A journalist, the forum agree, must be motivated by the public within the limit of the law to help them perform better for the gain of all with social responsibility and determination. Hamman Jabani, NTA News. The next set of reports will come from Lagos and here is Adiola. Thank you, Joseph. As the country continues to grapple with insecurity, Governor Babajide Sonwolu says the state is poised to enhance intelligence gathering capacity of security agencies to preempt and nip organized crimes in the board. He stated this at a Ramadan lecture on prayer and national security organized at the State House in Lagos. Musa Toliat completes the report. Security breaches and various forms of criminality have continued to stretch security architecture across the country. Governor Babajide Sonwolu said his commitment to protecting lives and property of Lagos residents is unwavering, adding that the current situation calls for a bold arrangement to step up security surveillance across the metropolis. Everything that is important to ensure that we keep our state safe, that we create opportunity for every one of you, for all of our businesses, for the youth in our midst. Islamic scholars stress the need for spiritual support to complement physical combat with a view to curbing insecurity in the country. We need to rejig the arrangement so that Lagos will continue to be an example for others. The event also offered a platform for political leaders to admonish those calling for secession in some parts of the country. We just have to build and tolerate each other, express love and harmony, understanding and management of anger is the solution to what we have on the ground. 
Muhammadu Bohar is trying for this to see how this security, especially at this Ramadan time, people have been praying all over the country to see how it is going well in the, in, the, in the country. The Ramadan lecture is one in series organized by Lagos State Government to emphasize the need for spirituality in governance. In Lagos, Musa Toliad, NTA News. Now, fans and players of topmost betting company, One Expert, are in for a great time following the unveiling of famous Nigerian music artist Davido as its brand ambassador. Samuel Johnson was at the media briefing in Lagos where the artist signed the deal. Founded in 2007, One Expert is one of the leading and trusted online betting and game sites in Nigeria and beyond, with a lot of games and live casino. In line with its philosophy of rendering optimal services to the consumers, the betting company says it is collaborating with Nigeria's famous music artist, David Doe, to add value to its customers. We have standard, which is international. We are one of the biggest in the world, and so when we do business, we have that behind our mind, our mind that we we must comply with uh, international best standards, and that is one. Two, we are very passionate about our brand because we have millions in our audience, and we cannot afford to fail them. Famous Nigerian music artist David O says he will use his creativity to promote the brand activities and bring it closer to his fans. I have a lot of friends and family that use this app and any app that you know gives Nigerians the opportunity to make more, to take care of themselves. And it's also fun. So we're going to be sitting down and discussing some new activities and new options for the app. You know itself, you know, with my fans as well. It's just going to be amazing. So just, just expect a lot of activities, fun. Obviously, what I do, I'm a musician, so obviously music, and then um, just teaching my fans how to play. You know, you can use the bonus code, code Davido One, and you know, play and win a lot of money. One X Bet offers high odds, fast payouts, great bonus, and best choices on virtual games. It remains one of the largest bookmakers in the world and also an official partner of some major sporting events in the world. In Lagos, Samuel Johnson, NTA News. And that's a bit from Lagos, but the news is not over. We shall take a break now and Joseph will continue thereafter. Stay with us. You can get more news and updates on www.nta.ng or follow us on our Twitter handle at NTA News Now. You can also like us on Facebook at www.facebook forward slash NTA Network News and also stay connected and subscribe to our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com forward slash NTA News Online. Also remember to watch our news live streaming at www.nta.ng forward slash live. Still watching NTA Network News, and we are back in Abuja. Let's turn our attention now to the world of business with Benny Adams as our guide. Benny. Thank you, Joseph, and welcome to the business side of the news. And we start by telling you that the Salaries and Wages Committee, chaired by the Minister of Finance, is to review the salaries of civil servants and other federal agencies. The Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, who disclosed this Tuesday at a National Policy Dialogue on Corruption and Cost of Governance in Nigeria, organized by the Independent Corrupt Practices Commission says President Buari has given a directive to that effect. Reviewing their mandates and then where we have agencies that are having the same mandate, we need to look at how to merge and fuse or in fact close down on some just to reduce the size of uh, expenditure of government. And on the capital market, investors lose 17.04 billion as NGX All Share Index dips by 0.08%. The week ended, equities closed at 39,801.78 basis points as against 0.95% appreciation recorded previously. 
Market breadth closed positive as La Saco led 24 gainers as against 12 losers. Market turnover closed positive as volume moved up by 29.88% as against 21.32%. FBNH, Axis, and Zenit Bank were the most active to boost market turnover, just as Zenit Bank and Wapco topped market value list. Cotville leads the list of active stocks that recorded impressive volume spike at the end of today's session. That is business news and network news continues with Suleiman Abdullahi Rigachukun in our Kaduna Network Center. Suleiman, take it from here. Thank you very much, Benny, and welcome to Kaduna. Governor Mohammed Badaru, a worker of Jigao State, has directed security agencies in the state to strengthen synergy and protect the state from all forms of security challenges. The governor gave the directive in Dusi during a high-level security meeting with stakeholders, including traditional rulers. Mohammed Musa Askira reports that the meeting was to re-strategize in maintaining the status quo of the state being considered one of the safest in the country. With heads of security agencies, traditional community and religious leaders in attendance, the meeting held behind closed doors is expected to produce a template with far reaching result in line with the national efforts to tackle the fast spreading security challenges in the country. The high level security meeting may also reinvigorate the collaborative role of traditional community and religious leaders in the maintenance of law and order in the society. Though with its low level of security challenge, Jigawa needs precautionary measures to maintain the relative peace being enjoyed in the state. We have discussed with the emirs and the Hakimais, uh, the local government chairman, DPOs and uh, commissioner of police and all other security agencies on the security issues around the country and the need for us to tighten our belt and be vigilant and prayerful for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to continue to protect us and uh, keep our country and indeed Jiga State safe. The last Sunday's attack on Bauchi communities following that of Gaidam in Yobe State, the two neighboring states to Jigawa might have sent a signal that calls for urgent measures to forestall any security breach in the state. Jigawa has experienced few cases of kidnappings and armed robbery in the recent past and government is doing everything possible to keep the steps safe besides supporting the federal government to address the nation's lingering insecurity. Muhammad Musa Askira, NTN News. Repair on the damaged portions of the Lagos Kaduna Zaria narrow gauge which resulted in the derailment of a Zaria bound goods train is progressing. Haruna Muhammad has the details. Vandalism of the rail line and cutting away of sleepers cliff from some portions of the track were said to have been responsible for the incident which occurred Saturday afternoon at Nguankanawa in Kaduna. The 15 wagon goods train conveying 870 tons of water pipes from Lagos to Zaria lost its bearing on the damaged portion emptying some of the goods. The wagon came suddenly towards us and we ran for safety. After an assessment of the vandalized portions by the officials of the railway and other stakeholders, repairs commence. We moved to the site of the accident with all our machineries. We have something we call BDT, breakdown train. The BDT is a composition of uh, all the machinery tools that are and, the, and personnel, personnel that are required to come up with railments. People need to be made aware of the use of the rail track. It is uh, important that communities, everybody gets to know that the rails are back again, and it is important that we address how we relate to the tracks going forward. In the meantime, the remaining load standing on the rail has been evacuated to Kaduna Railway Station for safekeeping. It is expected that in the next few days, the destroyed track and railway sleepers clip vandalized will be restored and it will be fit for traffic in Kaduna. Haruna Mohammed, NTA News. Thank you, Haruna. More reports ahead after the commercial break with Joseph in Abuja. Well, you must have heard that Bill and Melinda Gates have announced their divorce after 27 years of marriage, saying they no longer believe they can grow together as a couple. The co-founders of one of the world's largest private charitable foundations tweeted that after a great deal of thought, 
and a lot of work on their relationship, they have made the decision to end their marriage. Justin Bemoye reports that their net worth is set to be over $70 billion. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, with an endowment of some $50 billion, has had immense influence in fields like global health and early childhood education, and has made great strides in reducing deaths caused by malaria and other infectious diseases. Over the past year, the couple has been especially visible, regularly commenting on the worldwide fight against COVID-19, as their foundation spent more than $1 billion to combat the pandemic. In a statement that was posted to Twitter, Mr. and Ms. Gates said, After a great deal of thought and a lot of work on our relationship, we have made a decision to end our marriage. They went on to say that they had built a foundation that works all over the world to enable all people to live healthy, productive lives, and that they continue to share a belief in that mission. But they no longer believe they can grow together as a couple in the next phase of their lives. The foundation said in a statement that Mr. and Ms. Gates would remain co-chairs and trustees and that no changes were expected at the organization. Bill, 65, stepped down from Microsoft's board last year to focus on his philanthropic activities. The Gates, along with investor Warren Buffett, are behind the given pledge, which calls on billionaires to commit to giving away the majority of their wealth to good causes. Bill Gates is the fourth wealthiest person in the world, according to Forbes, and is worth $124 billion. Justin Bemunyi, NTA News. And on Sports World, Olumide Eguntala is standing by tonight with sports reports from our Lego studio. Olumide. Thank you, Joseph. A warm welcome to Sports Updates. Let's start with UEFA Champions League. A few seconds ago, about 89th minutes of play, Manchester City qualified for its first ever final after the team defeated Paris Saint-Germain 4-1 aggregate scoreline, having won the first leg 2-1. And still 89th minute of play, and the scores is 3-2-0 in favor of Manchester City. We are we had Marius call for Man City in the 11th and the 63rd minutes of play. Talking about Chelsea now with an away goal advantage to take Real Madrid in the second leg of the second semi final on Wednesday, the first leg ended one goal apiece. Back home now, actions continue on Wednesday in the Nigerian National League, where Team Tarawa takes on Gombe. Nigerian Air Force with three tackles with Rara FC. It will be mighty jets against Green Berets, among other matches. In another development, 30 caretaker committee chairmen of various sports federation have been inaugurated on Tuesday in Abuja with a call by the Minister of Youth and Sports Development, Sunday Diary, to take sports to the next level. The newly inaugurated committees will oversee the affairs of the federation, pending when fresh elections are conducted and new boards inaugurated. The caretaker committees are those specially selected to reflect our aspirations towards podium appearances at the Tokyo Olympics. Your job will terminate immediately after the Olympics as elections into the federations will be guided by their constitutions. Moving on to basketball now, Nigeria's representative at the meeting edition of the Basketball African League. Rivers Upas left the country for Rwanda on Monday evening. The third time Nigerian league champions are drawn in Group A alongside their counterparts from Rwanda, Madagascar, and Tunisia. We need to get out of our group, qualify for the final quarter, quarter finals, and from there everything will uh, take its rightful place. We are the only team representing um, Nigeria. So I know next season everybody will up their game, try to see how they can um, be part of it. 
for the 16th to 30th May at the Kigali Arena. And back to you, Joseph, Manchester City just won that match 4-1 on aggregate. Back to Joseph. <laughs> You can get more news and updates on www.nta.ng or follow us on our Twitter handle at NTA News Now. You can also like us on Facebook at www.facebook forward slash NTA Network News. And also stay connected and subscribe to our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com forward slash NTA News Online. Also remember to watch our news live streaming at www.nta.ng forward slash live. And sports wraps up NNTA Network News tonight. Thank you very much indeed for watching. Remember to be a star and connect with the NTA to stand against rape and rapists. I'm Joseph Johnson. Good night.